What's up, what's up, everybody? Uh, so for those that are asking, you know, uh, what am I talking about when I'm talking about the Learn, Plan, Profit, or, you know, does Ricky go live? What does it look like? Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna share a little bit with you guys. I'm going to do a, uh, this is actually a live stream. This was Thursday, uh, one of my favorite days. Uh, if you guys know, I like to, I take one gambling trade per week. Uh, I call it my gambling trade because you guys know I look for clues, uh, but it is a gamble because it's news coming out and you don't know how, uh, you know, things are going to look and algorithms are going to pick things up. Uh, but you guys know it's natural gas. It's, you know, I take a play on U gas or D gas. And so it's one of my favorite days to trade uh, just because it's fun. And so I want to share this for another reason because the market is red. Everyone keeps talking about the market. And Ricky and myself both are having the best week we've ever had in trading. So while everything's falling, while other YouTubers are making videos about, uh, you know, hide your money, pull it out, it's not the time. Uh, we're over here, you know, making the most money we've ever made, and it's because we can identify deals and still take advantage of them. Uh, so no matter what the market is, and I say this all the time, if you're a trader, uh, you know, we're looking for deals and, and we take advantage of them. So it doesn't really matter when there's there's inverse ETFs, there's multiple ways to make money. All we need is movement. The only day we don't make money is when the market doesn't move at all. Uh, so anyway, he just sent this link. Uh, he'll send this out to us, uh, you know, a couple minutes before the market opens. He'll, he'll let us know when he's setting it up. So that's why all these comments are actually already still here. Uh, before he goes live, he sends out the link when he's just finishing it up. Uh, so everyone comes in and says, hey, everyone gets gets ready to rock, you know, because we're about to watch him trade live. You'll see me comment on there. Uh, I'm also in the Discord chat telling everybody what my positions are. So everybody in here already knows where I'm at. And then you'll see what I'm uh, – calling out here in the chat as well hope you guys are all having a great start to your morning so one of the etfs that i've been watching this morning is forward slash ng it's been showing signs of this uptrend pattern showing signs of it being a little bit more bullish making higher highs and stuff like that so uh, one of the things that i observed is that once it reaches this general area uh right around here it tends to peak out so again just trying to have an understanding of so and right now i'm in the opposite i am in d gas for a swing and he's looking at uh, U gas, which is bullish with natural gas. If we're going to see a break above, that's exactly why I have my alert set at 320, right? Um, when it comes down to the overall pattern on U gas, U gas is trying to show signs of a balance and it has been making higher highs and it is opening green based off of yesterday's patterns. Uh, but again, not 100% sure if it's going to break above this EMA line. So all I'm going to do is simply, you know, wait and let's see and, and give it the benefit of the doubt, right? So. I'm gonna go ahead and move this a little bit to the side. There we go, there we go. Hope you guys are all having a great start to your morning. Um, let's see. Uh, for a lot of, for those that are joining us for possibly the first time, um, you know, today is Thursday. Uh, we usually try to focus, you know, at, on the natural gas report that comes out one hour after the market opens. Uh, so right now it's 6.30 for my time. It's going to be 7.30. Uh, let's uh, actually so crank this a little bit. Asking, uh, where can you access the natural gas report? Um, it's released you know, uh, minutes right before uh, it's announced and stuff like that, or that minute that it's announced and stuff. Uh, so you saw his original speed. Now we'll, we'll crank through this just so we can kind of get a, uh, a good feel of it. This was a very fun uh, fun chat this morning. Uh, it was just it's it was different this time because I was in D gas. He was in U gas. Uh, you know, which you guys know, when one goes up, one go the other one goes down. In this particular one, we both made money. Um, if I haven't said it yet, I'm about to tell everybody that I am. I'm about to tag out. He, he took his position in it. He's checking out over other tickers. Uh, these are tickers he's trading or someone else is calling out. Uh, so we'll hear his alerts go off. Here's everyone else calling out some of the stuff they've. So Sergio was able to get in on this one that he was just talking about and made 1800 for himself. Awesome job. I didn't even catch that that morning. I don't even think I'm in yet. We're gonna have to see is this going to hold? So, is D gas going to continue to push up or is it natural gas that's going to try to recover? So, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you guys had a pretty aggressive sell off all day yesterday, um, and D gas had a pretty aggressive push up. 
So it makes sense on why, uh, you know, it can try to recover, but it also makes sense on why it can continue to sell off the glue. It's just making lower lows today. As of right now, it just doesn't make much sense to pay attention to this. Uh, so because of that, I'm simply going to remove it from my watch list. As of right now, because AMD is pushing up, it makes sense on why, you know, it doesn't mean that I have to trade it, but why it might be something that I might want to watch, um, especially if I can get a, you know, a good buy. So I'll add it to the list and just simply, you know, keep a tap on it. So, and right there, we just saw him remove a ticker uh, because it was no longer met his criteria and then add another one. It's really that simple. It keeps you very micromanaged. Uh, it keeps everything very focused just on his watch list, which is what a lot of other people will follow. Uh, so it's not here to copy. Uh, you know, I, I say what I'm in, what I'm getting in, when I'm getting out. Uh, just I say it as I do it, and he's calling it out during the market. I'll do it throughout the day. It's not to copy, but it's just so people can see um, – you know, kind of our thought process and why we got in, when we got in, and, you know, kind of kind of develop their own trading strategy from that point. Ah, this is when I just got in. I was a little late today. I usually I am not late. Uh, so here's the interaction. You know, he'll ask all the new traders questions and uh, kind of help everyone else out. So it's not just we watch a YouTube video. Um, everyone else is... You know, helping him, not helping him figure it out, but it's more interactive, as you can see. He'll ask you a question, and you do, you don't have to be active in the chat, but it's nice, and it, it kind of, you know, it's just a better experience for everybody. So here's me saying, so I need DGAS to stay uh, about, but as autocorrect, because I was actually typing from my phone, about 1457. That was my break even, so I don't lose any money on this particular one. Uh, so I need you guys to stay um, about. Do you mean above? And he's calling me out right now. So I'll buy into the gas, and then I mean you guys, and then you guys will sell off, and then just because we know how my luck works, right? He's trying to help me out, but he's gonna buy you guys, and then you guys is gonna push up, and I'm gonna stop out. Don, I'm sure you're well aware of it. Um, I mean, uh, D gas is showing signs of it. I mean, you guys, I apologize. Uh, is showing signs of a uh, rejection as of right now in between the middle and bottom view op. As of right now, the only thing that I want to present is on the five day, five minute chart. So if we could bring that up on the five day, five minute chart, it's it's just approaching a, a, a general area, right? A price point around like $82, 80 to $82, which tends to be viewed as more oversold. So I do agree that it can probably continue to sell off before it begins to recover, um, but it, it's a it's reaching more of like this like buy range or buy territory so i haven't looked at the guys yet uh so you can see this guy buy when ricky sells that is a common joke because ricky will lock in profits and it's hilarious how many times to lock it in be green on the day very nice profit and it'll it'll still keep pushing up uh so we do make fun of him a lot for that Yeah, I'd say as it gets closer to fifteen dollars, it tends to become overbought, especially with this overall descending pattern. And it's right above, um, right where I'm at. Uh, we're about to. It's coming down. Uh, so someone's asking, when is the natural gas report coming out? That's at seven thirty a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So it's one hour after the market opens, wherever it is that you are. So East Coast time. I'm guessing it would be around ten thirty Central Standard so. Time. Uh, because this is something I trade every Thursday, it's not, not just because of me, but it is a very popular thing that the whole Learn, Plan, Profit group does trade. And a lot of people will save, if your account is under 25000 a lot of people will save a day trade just for today because you'll see, you'll see how quick and how fast it can be made. Uh, so right here, I even say, hey, I'm playing the daily chart. Everybody knows this. I've shared all my charts. Uh, there was a common support. It was a descending resistance. Uh, so I'm thinking the report is going to be in favor of DGAS and break that support. And uh, so I play that. So you guys pushing up was actually something I like to see when the report does go like that. It I joke around saying it's almost like a bank wants a good entry. So you'll see the opposite one push up. And then when that report comes out, you'll watch it tank. So UWT just broke above its resistance. I'm gonna add this to my uptrend watch list. UWT, so not DWT, but UWT. Um, this one has relatively pretty low volume, so something that we wanna be aware of. Also, let's understand its direction. It's been more of a descending pattern, so I would identify this, if anything, uh, to be a strong day trade, not a strong day whatsoever. Uh, so this particular one was actually, like I said before, an hour and a half long. Uh, it'll be right at market open. Um, and one of the days he'll go an hour after market open because some can't make it to the very morning.
Uh, so it really helps a lot of people out. See resistance on LEBU. Mm. These are biotech, right? Okay. Um, so this is the one that, that is offering that descending pattern. So the first resistance that I identify would be um, this specific EMA line. This is also one I just killed it on today. Time frames, the five day, five minute, maybe. Oh, okay. The SMA line has acted as a resistance before. So we might experience a resistance right around 5150. And then on the 10 day, one hours of time frame that I like to look at, it overall has been getting rejected by this area. Uh, and that would be right around um, that $64, $65 price point as well. So everything showing signs that it's trying to reverse, but um, you know, that's what I don't know. So AMD, just holy moly. Let's check this out. Let's, let's not uh, forget to lock in profits, right? I'm constantly reminding people to lock in profits and, and that's the thing you know he says it in his YouTube channel uh, on his Facebook everywhere and it, it's it's important you know lock in profits something we always say is you'll never go broke locking in profits you know how much better is it to say man I only locked in a dollar profit versus I took a hundred dollar loss I took a fifty dollar loss I took a thousand dollar loss one dollar profit is way better than all of those losses. Uh, so not not to put in that extreme, I would never trade for a dollar, but uh, that's actually what I made when I stopped out on on so DGAS. I didn't even yeah. So I even tell everybody here: if you're gonna cover your pro if if you're not gonna cover your profits, you know, and I say it right here in the chat, just to remind everybody: at least move your stop up to the break even, or maybe a little above it. Uh, that's something I do. I don't usually lock in profits. I will move my stop loss up into the green, and that's how I lock in my profits. Uh, because if it's going to run, I let it run, which is usually how I sell at the peak, uh, because it'll go all the way to the top. I'm moving my stop loss every bit of the way. It'll start to sell off. I'll give up a little bit of profit that way because it'll sell off and then tag me out. So this is the full breakdown on somebody else calling it out, asking because you know they wanted help with it. So Ricky's actually only really trading himself a couple tickers. A lot of these other ones are from people calling it out and asking uh, his opinion or you know help with their analysis to really kind of fine tune their trading as well. Just hit my goal for the week. Uh, done before seven a.m. Sam, super happy to hear that. Uh, I'm saying if done can I be sell too? No. Uh, Swords actually always strong uptrend. I asked him if we can get a dunk tank. And I'm going to figure that out. Ricky's going to have one. He's going to open up a, uh, a trading headquarters for everybody to kind of go and trade their big screens up. And I'm going to put in a dunk tank. He doesn't know it yet. Uh, but the second I figure out the address, dunk tank's going in. He's going to have to trade on it. If he loses, he's taking a swim. And I know his partners will help me do it. I just got to pitch it right. Oh, you're right there. Someone even said they'd donate for a dunk tank. It's happening. And again, if you're for some reason not paying attention to the whole video this is a normal speed uh, so it's a much slower I'm playing it two times fast because this is just a recap this is not a full-blown check this video out but I wanted to show us again because he's already taken a position he's thinking about adding uh, which I know he will because I'm about to tag out he will then he will take profits uh, which you know I'll, I'll play for that and then, uh, Hold steady, D -gas. Holy <laughs> this is me. I, I literally want you to make money, so um, I'll sell my position on you guys, and then you guys will shoot up, and then we'll stop. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want it to happen, but it did. Here it comes. Oh, what's going on here? Are we getting a bounce? So it's either going to bounce or tag bounce? out. We're showing these are his indicators. He uses the VWAP and uh, this is an SMA and EMA, and, and he goes over each one with all of those. So, and I already know I'm about to tag out. Yep, you guys should be breaking the middle VWAP. There we go. Um, we just broke below the middle VWAP for D gas, which means that you guys should be up. Where are we at? We Get to the exciting part where we make money. Uh, so here I'm about to tag out, and then everyone's going to see it just so you guys can see so how. I am still live in this chat. I am still sharing all my trades, and then so is Ricky. Do you plan selling before your position? And then this chat right here. Uh, that is me tagging out for D gas. Uh, it was fourteen fifty seven. My actual average was fourteen fifty five. So I still made a couple dollars with it, uh, but it wasn't something I would still consider that a break even. Let's do this. Oh, that's high enough for me. Where did I sell? Oh, that's actually not bad. Look, 84.10. Uh, so everybody watched him sell. He sold at 84.10, and then it, it... Not bad. It pushed up to 84.20, literally. Did you guys see that? 
not even a, a second after I sold. Look, and there it goes. That's not even bad for what normally Ricky normal will normally sell, and you'll see that thing push up two dollars. Okay. It's almost a trading plan to yeah. buy in when he sells. Stuck to my plan. Direction was kind of sketchy. The MACD was telling me, hey, you might want to get out. The RSI was telling me, hey, I'm not such a good deal. And then natural gas was again peeking out, showing signs of a peak formation. Again, hey, maybe I might want to get out. Just like talking to myself and, and, and trying to like really understand so. and not focus on my profits and focus on what the charts are telling me. Exactly. That's exactly what I do. So I'm even saying right here, I'm looking at natural gas on the daily. Uh, that's my thoughts. It's it's making lower highs. Uh, so I, like I said, I wanted you guys to go up because that only confirms what I'm doing. He's surprised. I think he, he ends up doing a market order instead of a limit. That ends up costing him. And we're going to roast him for it here in a little bit. He doesn't make mistakes, but when he does, we light him up because that's what you do. He should have been up quite a bit more, considerably more over $100 just on this particular trade. No guac on that Chipotle. Also, he's going to have to grab that free water now. I was like, hey, you know, I have this chapstick right here. I want you to... Opportunity cost is about to go on. We'll play this one at normal speed for you guys. Because it's not a bad example. A perfect example that I can give you. And again, every single time you take a position, you should think about it this way. I think you should. Uh, this is how, how I try to think about it. So if, I, if you were right next to me, and I was like, hey, you know, I have this chapstick right here. I want you to... Flip this chapstick and make it, you know, and just flip it, make it do a 360 and catch it. And if you do that first try, I will give you $5. This example right here is how you know he used to sell tech decks and play with little finger skateboards. Um, you know, I, I will do that and you'll make $5 and grit. But if I tell you, let's say for all my people there in, on the East Coast, right? Or for my people that are even not next to me and I'm like I will give you one dollar if you come visit me and flip the chapstick and catch it you have to ask yourself and in a business perspective would you do it probably not because you have because of like you know is it worth the opportunity cost is it worth the time is it worth the risk of everything that you have to experience yeah well <laughs> we have people saying that I'm coming so Keith um, I would love to hang out with you guys too but that's besides the point. That's why I said from a business perspective and an investing perspective, it doesn't make much sense. <laughs> yeah, uh, people, yeah, so travel cost and just the time factor, having to fly a plane or, or jump on a plane and do all that stuff, right? Just wouldn't necessarily be worth the time nor the effort. So um, now I'm pretty much just going to be waiting out for um, the natural gas report to come out, right? And we're going to play this too. Uh, so he's already locked in profits on you guys. I've already tagged out for a break even. At this point, I don't know if I've gotten back in. I said it in here. I haven't been watching the chat. I did the um, auction go yesterday. Is there a video? Not too sure if we're going to be making a video for the auctions that we visited yesterday. Um, I didn't buy anything. Um, but I think if we... Actually, um, Caleb and Weston made a video on... Uh, Weston goes to auctions all the time. So for all those that always like think that auctions are the best places to buy cars they actually just made a video yesterday on youtube uh talking about the three reasons why auctions suck um, <laughs> and i think weston has a well point of view. check out and that video why stuff. auctions and, suck um, i haven't watched it but i'm assuming it's because you have no idea what you're buying look you guess it's actually getting rejected i actually didn't do too bad with myself <laughs> oh, so here it comes perfect just like we expected right Sell off time. Um, probably not going to really fully sell off, but you know what I mean, right? I'm gonna wait for that MACD reversal, that RSI reversal, and we might have a good play on our hands. I'm gonna wait for this thing to start making higher highs. I like the, uh, the MACD on this one, not really the RSI though, but um, UWT. Looks like there's a couple things that are now starting to sell off. It makes sense, forward slash CL. Yep, makes sense, forward slash GC. Where are you at? Also, myself and a lot of others in the Learn Plan Profit group in the ETF chat with me killed it when oil sold off and we took advantage of drip i really want to make this video kind of show you guys you know kind of where i'm at in the morning so just joking said do me a solid and look at d gas uh, and look at that bounce it literally came down to my break even uh, it just wasn't worth me taking a loss on it because it, it could have bounced there it could have gotten you know, it could have gotten worse you know there's there's no idea so i like to just cover profits 
so it literally bounced right at my spot. It went to uh, 1456, I think. Literally just tipped me, turned right around. I ended up getting back in at 1462. I'm going to show it here, so I'll, I'll know exactly where I got back in. This is me Ricky, giving Ricky a hard time because it'll say TQQ or TQQQQ. -Q -Q. Uh, but we all know the ticker is TQQQ. -Q -Q. Uh, and that's, I make that joke because it's honestly the worst ticker to call out. I hate saying that, especially it's inverse. I do give him a hard time for that, but I do the exact same thing. So that's why I don't even call it. I call it TQs and SQs. Question of the day. What do you think the number one reason why Fortnite, um, if you could say in one word, what is one reason that Fortnite is, is losing its its popularity? What would you say? Uh, it's because Fortnite sucks. How can you snipe somebody from across the field with a shotgun? It's not even realistic. I know it's a video game. That one's crazy because there's realistic versions. Way more fun to play. And we're just having fun right now in the chat because we're waiting for that natural gas report to come out. The trades have been made. We've locked in profits. Um, I'm about to get in. Here's me calling Ricky out. Call of Duty. Challenge. Let's buy it. Let's throw it down. He didn't want any. Have you guys ever thought about this? The more patient, as something is selling off, think about this. The more patient you become, the more margin of profit that you build. What do you guys think about that? The more patient that you become as something is selling off, right? Because you're not in it already. So the more patient you are, the more margin of profit that you could build. Have you guys ever thought about it that way? So like, oh wow, like something is selling off. I'm gonna be so patient, not not focus so much on getting in right away, but the more patient I become and wait for that reversal, and until that, that confirmation or indication is, is presented, the more margin of profit I build. So Apple Juice just said something that we say um, when, when we invest in cars. So your profit is made when you buy, not when you sell. It, it's, that's a good, I think, mindset to have when it comes down to trying to solely focus on good deals. Your profit is made when you buy a car, when you get a good deal, then, when, uh, then instead of selling it, right? Because there's only so much that you could really sell it for, but if you focus on getting the best deal, that's really like a controlled variable that you can really control. Um, then, you know, as long as you're focusing on getting a good deal, that's what should be your core focus. You guys sold off to 83, now trying to bounce right back up. Again, natural gas report in eight minutes. It's a 1462. Here we go, 1462 is where I'm at. You guys sold off to 83, now trying to bounce right back up. Again, natural gas report in eight minutes. I'm back in DS now. Please don't get in DS, Ricky. Um, so I'm in it. 1462. Right on the dot. I felt like DGAS was, was show, starting to show signs of an uptrend, but again, I think its overall direction for forward slash NG was in my favor. That's so, the only thing that like really gave up a few cents per share. So it was just a few, few dollars. Nothing too crazy. Again, this is my gamble trade. So I'm not crazy in the position. Uh, this particular one for the gamble, I'm usually in only a thousand shares. So right here, someone's going to ask, what about getting in both? and just set up a, a stop so loss. Next, that's, an, that's an approach that a lot of people have presented so that you buy both UGAS and DGAS and then you put a stop loss on one or the other. And the only risk with that is if you put a stop loss at a specific price point or a stop limit, that's irrelevant if it doesn't, you know, because it shoots up and shoots down so quickly, you know, you run the risk of not getting filled at the price point that you want. So like, let's say this thing's about to, you know, shoot down, right? So. I put my stop loss at 51.75, at 51.71. If it shoots down so quick, you run the risk of getting filled possibly, you know, all the way down here, just depending on how quick it moves and, and where it is that that is. So there we go. So it's the difference in, so know the difference between a buy limit and a uh, or a limit and a market order so he's taking another position uh but like i was saying you know you can get in at uh, a limit is just that price more uh, often than not so okay yeah i have heard of that as well that sometimes have you guys ever seen this where um d gas first shoots up a little bit and then that would mean that u gas shoots down and then they end up reversing so imagine you stop loss now on both and end up taking a loss on both it's just not worth the risk to me right um and that's just my style but doesn't mean that you have to follow it so and that was actually me explaining that to the group uh right here you tag out both more often than not uh, because etfs can have these violent swings 
Um, you'll see a lot of them push one way, go to the other. Uh, still so tag out in both. You'll see, so and not only that, you'll take a huge loss because if you do a limit stop loss, your stop loss is only going to sell at a certain price, and it might shoot right past that. You're still the proud owner of those shares because it never sold; it was too cheap for you. And if you do a market order, you're going to sell at the bottom because it's going to shoot up all the way to the top, and it's going to recover very quickly. And that recovery play is something uh, Ricky's about to take again. Uh, on his UGAS position, because I'm already in DGAS. You're about to see, I was right, the report is going to shoot off, just like I explained in the beginning of the chat. Uh, you know, I think the report is going to favor DGAS because, and, you know, UGAS pushing up only confirmed that. It's going to shoot up. DGAS, or it's, natural gas is going to come down. DGAS is going to shoot up. Uh, and you'll see me actually sell my position here. Ricky will take a position because I know it's going to bounce and recover. Uh, and that's exactly what happens. So that's his position on TQQQ, shooting up. And I believe he actually has had his limit sell order, just Phil. <laughs> I'm up $75. That's <laughs> not that much, but it's cool. Isn't, isn't trading such, a, such an amazing thing? There we go. Up 100. This thing needs to get smaller, my goodness. So I'm already pushing up. We're already doing good. And this is the report right here. And you'll, you'll know exactly when the report comes out. Uh, because it'll release on there and algorithms are the ones reading the titles and they're the ones placing the trades for these banks. You'll see these happen as soon as that report is released and you'll see it. You'll see a spike way too big. This is why I don't even read the reports. It doesn't matter because as a human, you're just not fast enough. You just don't have that news quick enough. And then there it goes. See how fast that shot down just right there? Whoa. D got shot up. So there's me making my money. And like I said, I put my stop loss at 15.10, and he's about to take a position on UGAS for that recovery bounce. Uh, at this point, I just moved my stop loss. I just moved my stop loss up in the green. Dang straight. So now what do we do? Now what do we do? I'm going to go back to the charts. So we got filled on this. Natural gas with this huge sell off, meaning that UGAS is unfortunately down. Way down. Right? So this is my approach. This does not mean that you have to follow it. And people love to ask how much did I just make? Uh, I so I never really share the dollar amount. It is it's rare that I do. I have, uh, but because I call everything out live, uh, you know, people have a pretty good idea how much I've already made. So I'm going in right now. Average position a little bit below eighty fifty. Do you guys see that? A little bit below 80.50. This is, I view it as a dip by opportunity. Congrats, first of all. Um, congrats to all of you. <laughs> I love you, DGAS. Um, congrats to all of you guys that absolutely killed it on DGAS. It made sense on that why I locked in profits on you guys, right? Because uh, you never truly know. First of all, you guys at least have to understand um, with as much money as you guys made on, you know, on DGAS, you have to, like, please just don't get into the mindset where you think that you have it all figured out and that it's just a guessing game. This is not where you get lucky for a long period of time. Yeah, if you don't have a crystal ball, it's hard to guess this. So you have to either, uh, you know, subscribe to my channel and watch my Wednesday videos or, uh, you know, take your money to the roulette table. I even tell Ricky right here, I have a crystal ball. Uh, this is why I like going live on Wednesdays. Uh, I like to talk about my natural gas guests. Because it is a guess, it is just fun. He is right. It is a gamble. Uh, it's my one gambling trade a week I get to do because that report is consistent, and I don't mind trading it. So I'm about to tag out again because it's recovering pretty quickly. I know once he gets in, you're probably about to see me type in the chats that I just locked in profits. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, definitely to be quick with the fingers because if it's going to recover, it it's going to recover fast. Uh, oh another goodness. gambling thing is it can sell off and it is, so it'll always, it sells off and has a stopping point and then sometimes it doesn't recover. Sometimes it'll keep going. Doesn't happen that often. But just while I'm showing you guys this and you see me and Ricky taking a position in this, uh, understand 
it is always a two-way street. Nothing ever has to happen like it did the week before. I'm going to do 200 shares. I'm not going to let FOMO mess me up right now. Right? I'm going to be patient. And here we go. My stop was at 1510 and filled at 1505. Played out much better than I expected. I'm up 700. So, do the math. 1000 shares from 1462 to 1505 and literally just a couple minutes. And that's what's awesome about this. Uh, I'm going to lock it out here. We do uh, we roast Ricky a little bit. He does take his position on you gas and he locks in profit later and we all see that live. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Kind of an inside look what our mornings look like. That's what our Thursday looks like. Uh, with that report uh, the, again the report comes out every thursday one hour after open wednesday's report is the oil report uh, almost the same thing just not quite the volume uh, but i like this uh, particular one because everyone in this trade or everyone in this stream made money you know ricky made money i made money it was on an inverse pair which is the exact opposite we still both hammered it out he actually, uh, so again, you were about to watch him take a position. If I didn't stop it, he's taking a position in UGAS. He's going to sell it later. I'm going to get back in DGAS. I'm going to sell it the next day, this morning. Uh, it's Friday now. For a whole lot more money. Uh, not, not more than him, just a whole lot more just to my account. Uh, this is what took uh, advantage of, or this is how I was able to make the most money I've ever made trading. I'm a very conservative trader. So is Ricky. That's why, you know, that's why I'm in LPP. Uh, total because even though we trade so very different our styles are similar in so many ways uh, so I want to share that with you guys uh, a lot of you guys are in the LPP but if you're not you know I want you guys to get a look at at what it is and what and what we do and uh, so it's just a, a good time everyone helps each other out no one's beating each other down no one's trying to promote their stuff I know a lot of chats are annoying with the uh, there's a lot of spam in chats and we do a very good job of keeping that clean uh, so, you know, if you guys like what you see, you want to be a part of it, you want to check it out, or if you're even just thinking about it, there's really no pressure. It's always the first link in my description uh, for all my YouTube videos. Uh, so, you know, like I said, check it out or join me live. I go live after the market hours on Wednesday and Friday for now. Uh, so I'll look to see you there. And if you join LPP, make sure you message me uh, and let me know and I'll see you in the chats.